If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We've gone ahead and drawn a picture of these two charged spheres that are separated by a certain distance. And we are asked to calculate the tension that exists in the cord that we have colored in black here. And to do that, what we're going to examine is a free body diagram of this green colored sphere. We could also use the gray colored sphere, but the green works just as fine. Now, there are a couple of forces acting on the green colored sphere. Because we're in deep space, we're going to ignore the effects of gravity. We can assume that these two objects are just sort of floating gently through space and gravity can be safely ignored in this case. But there are other forces. Because both charges are positive, we know that they're going to be repelling each other. And so the green sphere is going to be pushed to the right by that gray sphere. So there would be a force pointing to the right and that force would be the electrostatic force. We can label that Fe. But there's also this cord that's connecting the two spheres. And because of that cord, the green sphere and the gray sphere are going to stay close together. And so in essence, the cord is pulling back on the green sphere to the left. And we can call that force the tension force. And that is the force that we're actually trying to figure out. Now, again, because the green sphere is sort of in an equilibrium state, we can set those two forces equal to each other. We can say that the tension force magnitude is equal to the electrostatic force magnitude. What we need is an expression for the electrostatic force. Now, we have learned that the electrostatic force acting on a charged particle is equal to a constant multiplied by the magnitude of its charge, which we can just call QA. We'll assume that this is sphere A, and then the other one is sphere B multiplied by the magnitude of the other charge that's in the vicinity, so that would be charge B, and then divided by the distance that separates those two charged objects. Where we have to be careful is with this distance. You may think that it's 300 meters, but if you look carefully, we're measuring the distance from the center of one sphere to the center of the next sphere. And since each sphere has a radius of five meters, that means that the total distance between the centers of these spheres is 310 meters. And so that's the distance that we're going to be plugging in for R. It turns out that the constant K has a value of 8.99 times 10 to the power of nine. We will omit the units for clarity for now. The magnitude of charge A was given to us in the question. It's 35 millicoulombs. Be careful about millicoulombs. You're gonna to have to multiply by 10 to the minus three in order to convert millicoulombs into the standard unit of just coulombs. And then the magnitude of charge on sphere B is the same because they were identical spheres with identical charges. So we would also have another 35 times 10 to the minus three coulombs. And then again, we'll divide by the distance that separates them of 310 meters squared. Don't forget to square that distance. You can pick up your calculator and plug that in. And when you do so, you should get approximately 115 newtons. So this is the correct answer for the tension force that exists in the cord.